It's good to see you this evening. We'll go ahead and turn to page 65, page 65. And uh, I want to start out by just giving you a little update uh, on Adam, let you know what we've heard. And so you can be praying and let's continue to pray. He says, uh, dad has a brain bleed and they are trying to relieve the pressure. Uh, tube is in the brain for drainage and they have him paralyzed uh, and have put him uh, in a stand-up bed to help with the pressure. He's in critical condition. They, have, they had to stop the medication for the stents uh, they, that they put him on, but he, this has complications for the stents. Trying to stand up the bed in, here in a few minutes, and he said, thanks for praying. So please continue to pray in this very uh, critical time in his, in his dad's life and the family. And then I understand that Jack Shook is getting close maybe to to crossing over, isn't he, Pat? So, so let's let's do have special prayer tonight. Uh, let's bow and have prayer right now, and then we'll uh, come to this song, uh, number sixty-five. Number sixty-five. Father, we come to you, Lord, knowing that you're our God, 
Lord, you're all-knowing, all-powerful. Lord, you haven't been taken by surprise by these things, but Lord, we sure have been shaken today. We ask you to please, Lord, help Adam, his family, his dad, his mom, Lord, everyone in this family needs your help right now, and I pray that you'll continue to bless, and, and may your will be done, Lord. We pray that you'll be merciful, merciful God you are. We know the judge of all the earth will do right. We know that you'll do right, but we trust you, Lord, and ask you for extra grace in this hour. We love you. Thank you, and Lord, we ask your blessings upon this time that we have together. Will you please bless our hearts and help us to enjoy your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together, number 65. Number 65. Remain standing, if you will. Brother Ben's going to lead us in one more number right before the children come. What is 63. it? 63. All right. 63. Amen. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I shall see. It's going to be reality one day. Amen.
seated. The children are coming their, our way, and uh, 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 poor Ben, he catches things. He never knows what he's going to get back here. I've seen words that he's never heard of when behind him. I don't know how in the world he does what he does, but I, I appreciate him, and I appreciate you. I appreciate those that have worked so hard this past weekend, and I'm going to get David to say something about that in just a moment, in just a little bit, but uh, I, we've got some wonderful servants here, and I appreciate every single adult that worked we had meals there was cleaning there was all sorts of things that needed to be done and some that were working with the kids and their games and and uh, keeping everybody in line well thank you I, I meant to get somebody lined up thank you but uh but i appreciate uh, appreciate all those that have worked with the young people i'm telling you you can't put too much investment in your children Amen. and uh I, we just can't it, there'll be a return in that if we'll just love these children, if we'll, we'll put the right things in, put the right things in their planter box, sow the right seed, somewhere there'll be a harvest. And I appreciate the parents that, uh, that do that. They try to invest in their children. Uh, may they be a blessing to you tonight. I, I forgot I need to line up somebody to um, help with the songs, but pray for them if you will. for prayer now. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are an able God, and I pray that, Lord, you're, you would bless these children, watch over their lives. I know you're able to do that, and I pray that you'll please continue, Lord, to, to just put the right people in their life, Lord, and keep the wrong people out. Guard their eyes, Lord, put Holy Ghost filters over their eyes and ears, and, and guard their hearts, we pray. We sure love you and need you and ask you to bless the offering now in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty.
uh, Bible Institute. So if you're able to join us for Bible Institute this year, um, keep kind of giving this announcement a little bit as we get closer. Um, start, uh, starting on August 31st, so it'll be every Thursday night starting August 31st, um, up through, if my math's good, November 16th. Um, it's a 10-week course built into that. There's two weeks that we'll have off, men's fishing trip week, and then uh, the James Knox Revival week. So anyways, that will end, allow us to end a week before uh, Thanksgiving, so it's, it's kind of a nice window there. But anyways, starting August 31st, uh, 10 weeks long, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. each Thursday night. All right, so um, if you've been able to come in the past, hope you come again. If you haven't, then there's plenty that have. You can talk to me or other people that have uh, had a chance to come. Uh, myself and brother uh, Peter Herlin are the, are the teachers, all right? Um, I will be teaching... Um, through the second half of Romans, all right, even if you weren't there last year for the first half, it's fine. It's Bible, it's good. Um, so second half of Romans, and then Brother Peter is looking to uh, work with the book of Hebrews, all right. Um, I encourage you to invite a friend. It's a Thursday night, meaning that, you know, even your good family and friends that go to other churches probably don't have obligations on Thursday night, so um, if they're interested in learning their Bible more and getting into, getting into doctrine, then um, try to try to invite them out. Um, next week, I'll have a sign-up sheet back there with a little bit of the information I probably just said, along with kind of a, an interest sign-up sheet. Um, you know, in the past years, Brother Peter and I have been really blown away, and it's it's the Lord. But we've had twenty to thirty people show up, you know, practically every Thursday, and um, yeah, and I think most. We've done it two years. This would be year number three. I think we've had probably 15 to 18, something like that, that have come for, you know, eight, eight to 10 of those nights, right? They've come really consistently. So um, truly, it's one of those things where if you can dedicate yourself to be there as much as possible, great. If you pop in for two or three, that's fine, right? So that's between you and the Lord, of course. But um, anyway, 7 to 9 p.m. every Thursday, starting here at the end of August, uh, we take a break in the middle with some snacks. Um, but it is about 55 minutes from each one of us, and it's, uh, you know, it's a good time for a Bible study and uh, looking at doctrine. That's so, right. It really is. Amen. Thank you, Dave. All right. We had a great time this weekend. Uh, the Lord really seemed to meet with us, and it was a blessing. We played, had some games here Friday night as we kicked things off to try to break the ice. We had a couple of groups make it in for Friday, um, so we had, you know, I'd say two or three visiting groups, and then our, our folks as well. And so we had some fun games in here, and we had tried to get everybody to know each other and get things uh, a little lightened down a little bit before the preacher came. And then the preacher came, and, and he preached three wonderful messages. I, I don't know if Brother Josh has them uh, online or not, but I encourage if they are, uh, please get by there and try to listen to those messages. They were tremendous. Uh, Brother Chisholm did a, a wonderful job. The Lord really seemed to use him in a, in a great way. And then uh, so Saturday we kind of had this full day event. We had some uh, competitions, some fun games in the fellowship hall. Uh, Brother Adam has already got those on the TV screen there as you go out this afternoon or this evening. You can see some of the games we were able to play there, see some of the young people having fun, as well as when we went out to the street and you can see uh, Miss Mel to, drove up and down the side there and, and has a video. It's, it's almost so fast how people are going by, but it's really neat to see. Um, if, if you could have seen it in person, it would have been even better is to see 50 or so people on this side of the road and 50 or so people on this side of the road. Uh, I, can't, I, I think almost everyone had a, a scripture sign as well. So there's a lot of the, of the Bible that just was presented to our community there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so while we were out there. Um, we, did have, we have groups that came back from that. I think the folks at Morristown hadn't done it before. And they were like, they were excited, asking me tons of questions about how we did it and where we got the signs and things like that. So um, we're excited about what the Lord might do with that. And then we had, uh, I think it was mentioned here, maybe in the, maybe it was in the prayer room, about how the, we, we, we know that the folks there in Bear Trail, they do this. We know the folks at Old Paths are already, already you know, hold up scripture signs as well. But I think that the camaraderie and understanding that there's a, there's a group of young people here, there's a group of young people here, and they're just trying to serve God the best way they know how. And that, I, I think that's a shot in the arm. Uh, it's a shot in the arm to me to see young people that, that are excited about serving the Lord. Um, and then we, had, we just had uh, 215 or so verses of Scripture were memorized and quoted to our Scripture memory team that was here. We had folks, uh, five or six from our church, that were collecting those. Uh, those they are holding clipboards while they quoted Scripture to them. Um, the girls really wiped the floor with the guys this year, unfortunately. But um, it's, uh, we, we, 
the competition's there for fun, of course. And it was the, the theme of it was a child of the king. And we tried to choose songs and we tried to do, choose verses, of course, that uh, dovetailed with that theme to really drive it home in the hearts of those that were there. And we sure hope it was a help to them. And uh, I hope you'll continue to pray for it. I think that uh, there was friendships that were made, uh, um, lots of things that went on during the meeting that, you know, that we don't even know about. So the Lord might be doing a work in many hearts. So I hope you'll pray for them. I failed one more thing. I'm sorry, Brother Ben. We had uh, tr so much help. Uh, people have come to me and said, hey, look, I heard the meeting went great. Thank you for what you did. I, I, can't, I don't want to take any of that. Um, any, yeah, if, you were, if you were there at, at all, if you helped at all with the meeting, maybe you weren't even there Friday or Saturday, but you helped with the meeting. I know there's some that weren't able to make it, but they were able to donate or, or bring some things in. If you were able to do that, will you stand up for me? Come on, Miss Mel, stand up. Call them out. These folks, uh, most of them that, were, that are standing right now were there every night. They were there, I know, like uh, Brother Rick and Miss Terry. I don't even know if they got into the meeting at all. They were down there cooking and preparing meals the whole time. It was just a blessing, to a lot of the work that went in behind the scenes. But thank you all that were there. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you for all that you did. Thank you. All right, take your songbook if you would. We'll stand together and turn to page 119. That was a tough storm earlier today, amen? But you know what? It passed on. It passed on <laughs> till the storm passes by. Let's sing this song, amen? We'll sing this for Brother Peter, amen? In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face While the storm
handbell practice planned for next Sunday at 5.30. You can see Miss Cindy Lewis if you have any questions there. And then there's a baby shower from uh, Miss Leah and, and Brother Chris. It will be on Tuesday, April the 15th at 7 o'clock um, for baby boy Micah. And there's a registry that you can find it at babylist.com. And there's some information there on how to track them down and find out what that little baby needs. So I hope you'll be a blessing to this, uh, this home. And then uh, Sunday evening fellowship planned for Sunday, August the 13th. Um, everyone's asked to bring heavy snacks. I like that phrase. I don't know why, but I just like it. I don't know what that really means either. Are they heavy when you, never mind. Um, heavy snacks, desserts, and drinks. Um, we'll also have plan to have a little special celebration for our pastor and Miss Vicki uh, to help celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. What a blessing that is. The church plans to provide a cake, and I uh, hope you'll just make plans to be here. Again, that's uh, Sunday evening, August the 13th after the service. And then uh, two more things. There's a Sunday school teacher meeting planned for Sunday, September the 3rd at 430. Um, and then lastly, on August the 26th, uh, a few weeks out, there's a youth meeting at Beth Bethany Baptist Church. It's Brother Chisholm's uh, church. And uh, we, the, the meeting starts at 5 o'clock. Lord and William will plan to go down. And there's a combined choir practice. He was planning to try to get that started, so we may leave a little early to get down there and be part of that. Amen. Thank you. Did my ears play tricks on me, or did he say April 15th for the baby shower? And that's a, that's a long ways off, I think, isn't it? Next year, April 15th. Is that right, sis? Oh, no, okay. okay. I think it was August 15th. Okay, all right. Just want to clear that up, making sure. That made me feel so good when he did that. That made me feel so good. Uh, maybe it's not because of my age that I do that. That's good. Amen, that's good. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Brother Brent, would you be willing to pray for us, sir? Thank you. Amen. All right. You can be seated. Miss Leah is singing for us. Um, this is a song I've been saving for a long time. A, a couple months ago, I, I know a lot of people are aware of it, but uh, Ron Hamilton, a.k.a. Patch the Pirate, passed away. And um, when that happened, I immediately thought of this song, but I just I never had the, I don't know, it just never felt like the right time to sing it. And um, one of his favorite albums or peak groups of music that he made was right after his dad died. And the pieces in that group of songs, they helped me through so many hard parts of my life. And just a couple like nights ago, me and Chris were talking about how there were some people in our life that ran before us. And he, I mentioned um, Mr. Herman, and he mentioned Brother Ted. And then that made me think of Pop Baker and Brother Buddy. And, and right now, Mr. Adam is sitting by the bedside of somebody that he saw as his hero and it's, the song's called Faithful Men and it just goes through how there are always people that fought and stood before us and set an example and I know a lot of that, the youth I wasn't able to come to the meeting but I know the youth in this church, you have a lot of examples in front of you people that you don't even realize that care as much as they do about you and I'm just really grateful for songs like these that remind me of that and help me not forget the people that came before us and, and gave us an example for Christ.
Exodus chapter 11, and I want to apologize to some that are here that uh, they're going to hear something they've heard before, but they probably needed it again anyway. So um, I apologize to Ken, Ben, and Amy, and Sarah, and her, those that were with her in Bessemer City. But I thought when I was preaching, I said, I, I need to preach this at home. And um, I, I think I'll do that just tonight. Amen. I, sometimes, I guess, you know, how many have ever eaten a bologna sandwich? Amen. How many have eaten it more than one time? Okay, all right, good. I just want to make sure. Yes, it's good the second time too, isn't it? Amen. I, I hope I hope that <laughs> mayonnaise, I like onion on mine, yeah. Anything I can put on it, tomato. Yes, sir. But uh, I do want to look at this thought. I, I believe the Lord is helped us with it. We're going to start by reading Ezekiel chapter 22. And uh, you know, it's one thing for the world to slip and get away from where we should be. I'm glad God gave us a plumb line, by the way. Amen. Amen. We, we have a plumb line, and that's the word of God. It's considered a plumb line. And, uh, but too many times, and the word of God's given for correction, the Bible says. That means we can get wrong. You know, we need the Bible to get us correct. We can get off the mark, and, but God can bring us back. But uh, I expect the world to be wrong. But, you know, even in Christian circles, individuals, churches, they can start getting off the mark. And that's what we find here. God is indicting the priests, the prophets, here in this portion of Scripture. It says in verse number 23 of chapter 22, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art a land, thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey, they have devoured souls, they have taken the treasures, the treasure and precious things, and they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Here's what I want you to see. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from the Sabbath and I have profaned I am profaned among them let's uh, let's have a word of prayer father I do want to thank you dear Lord for the blessings that you've given us today we've so enjoyed it Lord but I pray for these few minutes you'd please help us Lord to have our our vision cleared up Lord may we get back on target if there's something out of line in our life I pray that you'll please help us to get back on the mark and we'll be careful to give you glory Lord we do want to make a difference in this world and Lord we do know that you did make a difference in this world you made a difference in our life but Lord we're desiring to make a difference in our little world we pray that you'll help us in Jesus name amen uh, today, the day we're living in, that people, there's a lot of people that are saying that there is no difference anymore. And they're, they're rubbing out the line of distinction. You know that. You know how they're trying to say there's no absolutes. Nothing can be black. Nothing can be white. It's all gray. It's, nothing's in black and white. And uh, they don't even know what a child is identified as. They say there's no difference in a boy and a girl. They say there's no difference in them. Uh, men and women getting married, uh, two men, two women can get married, there's no difference. Living in a day where they think there's no difference in an NIV and a, and a King James Bible. We're living in a day of big, where there's no difference. And uh, we see that in Ezekiel, but in the book of Hebrews, we'll see that God does say that there is a difference. In the book of Exodus, just in chapter 1, you see as they start out as a a people who, who started out fruitful and increased abundantly. In chapter 1, verse 7, they, they multiplied, they waxed exceedingly, 
But then all of a sudden you see they're changing. They're, they have, now they have taskmasters set over them. Now they're afflicted with burdens and now they're serving with rigor. I'm telling you, in this world that we're living in, uh, it's not an easy street. You know that. You know the longer we live in this world, the harder it seems to get in the secular world trying to earn a living, trying to raise a family, and trying to protect your family from the onslaught of evil and wickedness. We're living in a cesspool of iniquity, if you will. And it's, and it's not getting any better. The Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. They're going to, it's going to get worse and worse. It was a place where there was a bunch of frogs, stinking place, a defiled place. And, and the Bible says in 8, 4 and 14, it says there were a lot of frogs, dead frogs, and the land stank. And I, I believe that's where we're at. As I said, this, I believe we've got a lot of abominations in our land. As a matter of fact, I showed you just a few weeks ago that, that our present administration has, has got over 200, the first 100 days he placed over 200 LGBTQ into his leadership positions. And so we've been turned over, I believe, into a reprobate mind. We've turned into a reprobate nation. And uh, it's all because we don't want to acknowledge God in our thoughts, in our heart, in our school systems. We don't want to acknowledge God. And uh, so we've been turned over, I believe, to a, because we don't want to retain God in our knowledge. We have put up a retaining wall and we've pushed God outside of that retaining wall. There's all kinds of wickedness that has filled up that void in our nation. And we're in a mess. Just like it was in Egypt, the land stank. Our land stinks with ungodliness. I believe it's become an abomination to our Lord. And that because the reason for that, a lot of it, there's been a degeneration problem. Joseph had died in Egypt, and they had lost the influence of Joseph, and now he's gone. Well, we've lost a lot of godly influence over the years. You think about D.L. Moody's gone, C.H. Spurgeon, Harold Seitler, Oliver Green, J. Harold Smith, and, uh, and I could go on many others. We're losing some of the dear older saints of God that used to hold the plow and plow straight. But now, now it's changed a little bit. I'm glad we still have some that hold the line. And we have some that are still standing where they stood when they started. And they got their focus set on Jesus. They're looking at him, the author and finisher. They're pressing toward the mark. I'm glad we still have some like that. But we're living in a different day. The Bible says there arose another king that and that knew not Joseph, and, and the people all of a sudden find themselves in captivity, they're burdened down, they, they're living bitter lives, and they're miserable. And next thing you know, all of a sudden, they, they're, they're forcing them. They want their children. They're wanting to throw their children to the crocodiles and trying to destroy the children. I see the same thing going on here. Our government wants to get a hold of your children and poison their minds. And, and put bad garbage in their minds and, and, uh, and conform them, but conform their minds and into what they want them to be. I'm amazed that the parents will let them do that. But that's where we're at, this country. But I got good news for you. God raised up a deliverer. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm glad the deliverance was on the way. You see that in Exodus chapter 1. There was a deliverer that was about to be raised up. When they're killing babies, when the sodomites come out of the closet, I'm telling you, a lot of times God sends a deliverer. Deliverance is coming. They were just about to check out of Egypt in this text. Just about to slip out of that world. Amen. Well, thank God. I'll tell you what, we got, we got some great things coming at us. I believe we have a deliverer that's on his way. Amen. His name's Jesus Christ. Our Savior, amen. There's going to be a trump and a shout, and we're getting out of this place. We're going to be gone. Hallelujah, there's a deliverer coming. But God raised up a man named Moses. Forty years thinking he was a somebody. Forty years in the BSOD University learning he was a nobody. And then 40 years he saw how God could use nobodies. Amen. God can use a crooked stick to draw a straight line. That's what he did with Moses. That's what he does with us. He can take just an old crooked stick and draw a straight line. He can take a ruddy old little boy and take down giants. He can take an ugly rooster and bring conviction in a backslidden preacher. He can take a jawbone of an ass 
and slay thousands, God takes pleasure in using little things to accomplish big things. Amen. And he was about to do that with this man named Moses. Now, now the chapter 12 is a wonderful chapter. I'm telling you, there's a difference in chapter 12 and chapter 11. Chapter 12 is all about the lamb. Oh my, what a lamb. Look at this, it says, uh, Speak ye unto the congregation, verse number 3, of Israel, saying, The tenth day of this month they shall take unto them every man a lamb. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little uh, for the lamb, notice it goes from a lamb to the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls of every man according to his eating shall he make uh, your count for the lamb. Now notice it changes again from a lamb to the lamb to your lamb. It's a personal lamb. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I have a personal lamb. Yeah. And then we see he's to be a perfect lamb. He says, your lamb shall be without blemish. He's to be spotless. He's to be a strong lamb, a male of the first year. Amen. He's supposed to be a separated lamb, taken out from the sheep. And then we see, it says in verse number 6, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day, the same month, the whole assembly of the congregation uh, of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper post of the houses wherein they eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Listen, judgment was coming. And the only way to escape that judgment was through the lamb. Amen. 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 And that lamb, they were supposed to take that lamb and take that blood in a, in a basin and put some hyssop in it. And they had blood in the house. They had the lamb in the house. They had the blood on the outside of the house. They had it have, have it on the doorpost and the lintel. The doorpost and the lintel. Blood everywhere you see. That, that's how you got deliverance. Amen. Glory to God, I'm glad I have deliverance Amen. through the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Amen. He's the door, by the way. He said, I am the door. I'm glad I went through that door one day. I have eternal life all because of Jesus. But in chapter 11, right before, right before, they're about to check out. I like what it says here. Let's just read chapter 11, a few verses here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards uh, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out thence, hence to get all together. Speak now in the ears of the people. Let every man borrow of his neighbor, every woman and her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Now we're going to need that for the tabernacle. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt and in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn of the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne even unto his first, the firstborn of the maidservants that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of the beast." And there shall be a great cry throughout the land of Egypt, such as uh, there was none like it, nor shall uh, be like it any more. Here's what I want you to see. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know. Why? That ye may know. He said the, the tongue of a dog, that night that you check out, the tongue of a dog won't even move. In other words, he's not going to move his tongue. He's not going to bark. He's not going to make a single sound. And why? That ye may know that the Lord put a difference between the Egyptian and Israel. This world says there's not a difference. There's not a difference. But God says there is a difference. There, and here's what I want you to look at. There is a difference in a dog, an Egyptian dog, right? It mentions the dog of an Egyptian. What's it mention about the children of Israel? A lamb. There is a difference in a dog and a lamb. That's my message right there. There is a difference. There is a difference. Let me say there is a difference, first of all, in the people 
There's a difference in the appearance of a dog and a lamb. You can tell, you set a dog still, you put a dog right here and you put a lamb beside it, it don't take long. You can look at it and you know immediately there is a difference in a dog and a lamb by their appearance. Did you know that we should be different? As a child of God, we're not supposed to look like the world. We're not supposed to act like the world. We're not supposed to be like the world. God made a difference when he changed me, when, he, when I received him as my personal Savior, and a Holy Spirit moved inside of me. There should be something inside of me that makes me want to look holy. It should be. It shouldn't be because the preacher browbeats you or thumps you over the head with the Bible. There ought to be something inside the heart and soul of every truly child of God Inside, there's a Holy Spirit, and it should be that that makes us want to look different. Just all you do, all you have to do to see that the appearance is important is just get in your car, fly down the road doing 70 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone, and have a police officer right there and catch you. All of a sudden, you see the blue light behind you, and when you look in the rearview mirror, when he's pulled you over and you see him walking up, you can tell he looks different. There is a difference. You know immediately when you look at his blue pants, if he's a state patrol or his gray pants, and got a stripe coming up the side of his legs, and he's got a, a, maybe a gray shirt on, and he's got a gray hat, and it's, it's, he's all neat and dressed, and everything's in order, and he's got that badge on him. You know that there, there, it's important the way you appear. You go in a hospital. You walk down through the hospital and that doctor comes in. Usually he's dressed like a doctor. He's got his white coat on. He's got the stethoscope around his neck. You can see him and you know by his appearance that he's a doctor. Well, you and I as a child of God, listen, there's a difference in the appearance of a dog. I mean, some people, some people, they want to dress like the world, talk like the world. I'm telling you, but there should be a difference in our appearance. You look at a dog, you can tell he's a dog immediately. You can look at a lamb and tell that they, it's a lamb immediately. Now, I've, I preached some years ago on this thing in Numbers chapter 1, the very first mention. You might want to look at that. Numbers chapter 1, I don't know if you've marked it. It's been a long time, I think, since I've preached on it. But it's so important that we have standards, church. It's important that you have standards in your life. I, I hate to have to, and I don't have to do that that much here now. We have some mature Christians who know better. I, I, I pray I do. I pray we do. You've been saved long enough to where you should. I hope you don't go out in the world and parade naked up and down the road and in public and places like that. I'm telling you, that's, that's not good. There's a God who knows that. Your children see that. And you, you have a standard at church, and then you have a different standard. That's living a double standard, and you're teaching your children some bad things there. They're saying there's not much to this thing. That's all you're doing. You're doing harm if you have a double standard to your own children. But here's the first mention of the word standard. I want you to look at it with me in chapter 1, and we see it in verse number 52. And uh, we'll, start, we'll start reading in verse number 50. He says, And thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, over all things that belongeth to it, and they shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle set it forth, the Levites shall take it down, and when, when the tabernacle is pitched, the Levites shall set it up, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Now here's what I want you to see. It says, And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents every man by his own camp and every man by his own standard. And notice, notice in chapter number 2. It says, And the Lord, the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house, far off about the tabernacle of the congregation, shall they pitch it. Notice this. And on the east side, toward the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout the, their armies. And Nahashon, the son of Amenadab, 
shall be the captain of the children of Judah. And his host, uh, and he goes on to that, verse number 10, notice this, on the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben. Go over to verse 18, and on the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim. And then in verse 25, the standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side. So here's, here's what we have. You know what a standard is. We have those flags back there. It's a lot like a flag. It was a pole that would stick up, and it had the family seal on it, and it had an ensign uh, on it, and it was a mark of identification. That's what a standard was. That's how they identified who they were. Amen. It was also a mark of direction. That's how they knew where they were going. I mean, you don't want to just wander through the wilderness. You've got to have some direction in your life. And they knew that this camp was at the east, and this camp was at the west, and this camp was at the south, and this camp was over here at the north, and it gave them direction in their life. And it was to stop the confusion. It's a symbol of separation. It was able to show that there was a separation in these camps. And so the problem is, in Isaiah, it says the standard bearer can faint. And when the standard bearer faints, there's confusion. Why would we want to wander in confusion? God is not the author of confusion. If God's not the author of confusion, who is? Satan is trying to do what he can to mark out and rub out the line of distinction. That's what he's doing today. He is planting his seeds in the mind. He's blinding the minds of them which believe not. And there is no mark of identification anymore. I mean, men want to look like women and women want to look like men. And I'm telling you, the lines are all blurred anymore and there is no mark of identification. All you have to do is go out to a to a restroom in a public place and you can see even our restrooms show that there's a difference. I mean, you look at the men's restroom, you're going to see a, a little object of a man and he's got pants on like this. You go to the restroom of a sign anywhere in public and you'll see a little sign on it, may not even tell, say women, but it's got a picture of a little round head on it, it's got some arms sticking out and it goes down like a little triangle and you can tell it's a dress. Even society knows the difference, but they don't want to, they don't want to perform the difference. We're living in a day where man says, there is no difference. There is a difference. A man is made different. A woman's made different. A man is, is in the heart of a little child to do what a man does. A kid will take a stick, a little boy will take a stick, and all of a sudden it becomes a weapon. It's just natural. A little girl would take something years ago, old time, way back, they would take a corn husk and make a little baby out of a corn with that husk on it. I mean, it's just something natural in a little child and a little girl to want to be a little girl. There's something in a little man's, little boy's heart to play with trucks and cars and things. They, I mean, there is a difference. There is a difference in appearance. There's a difference in appetite. You know what sheep like to eat? They like to graze in the green pastures. They like to drink from the still waters. Did you know a dog? He likes blood. He likes flesh. He has an appetite for the flesh. He's a sensual creature. They, you get these C and I dogs, they got super good vision. They can, they can direct a man that's blind and lead him around. You get a bloodhound, man, he's got super strong senses of the He can smell things and track something down. Some dogs' hearing is so keen. Super strong senses. They're a carnal animal. They have a carnivorous appetite. They, they like flesh. There is a difference in appetite. Did you know that the Bible says that the child of God is not to love the world, neither the things that are in the world? You know what kind of appetite we ought to have? We ought to love meat, milk, manna, honey, bread, water. We, there should be a difference. There should be a divine appetite. 
for the things of God. Amen. But, but I'm afraid sometimes there, we, we've got the wrong appetite. We need to make sure that we keep it. You know yourself that uh, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, 15, uh, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And the Bible says the love of many is wax cold because iniquity abounds. And a lot of times we, our love will grow cold. You know that 1 Kings chapter 3, Solomon loved the Lord somewhere along the way. In chapter 11 it says, And Solomon loved many strange women. At one time, I tell you, our love can, for the Lord can shift and all of a sudden start loving the world. We can, our hearts can get that. But there is a difference. Our appetite shouldn't be for the things of the world. Our appetite ought to be for the things of God. There is a difference in the appetite of a dog and a lamb, and there's a difference in their appearance, and there's a difference in their attitude. You take a stick and put it in your hand, and you walk toward a dog, that dog's liable to turn and rend on you, growl and show their teeth. You come up to them. I'm telling you, a dog might just attack you if they see you got a stick in your hand. A sheep? It says, thy rod and thy staff. David said, the Lord's my shepherd. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, you can take that rod and that staff with a sheep and you can sort of correct it. If it's going off course, you can sort of tap it a little bit, get it back on course. Maybe take that little hook and pull it back. You know, attitude. You get somebody, as, as a pastor, I've seen it. You get somebody that you wonder about, them, about their salvation even. Yeah. I mean, they turn and rend on you when you try to correct them. Right. Uh, sure. You try to take that staff and that rod, the Bible, yeah. and they get upset, think you're preaching to them. Well, I am preaching to them. Right. Yeah. I'm preaching to everybody. Amen. 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 I'm right. preaching to everybody. I'm not, I'm not excluding anybody. When I preach, I'm preaching to everybody. Amen. I've had people come to my house years ago. A man came to my house. I didn't even know he was coming to church. And I preached my message, and he came the next Monday morning, pulled up in my driveway, and said, well, I've never been to a church where somebody preached directly at me. Oh, my. I was preaching the Bible. That's right. I didn't even know he was coming. I had my outline there. Yeah. Yeah. I said, what are you talking about? He was under conviction. Exactly. He was, had, had the attitude of a dog. <laughs> How's that, fellas? That's, you said you like my rooster this morning. That's my dog. I, I still have a junkyard dog in here, by the way. I just try to keep him leased up real good. The Lord helps me with that. Amen. That attitude of a dog, the appetite. But then I, I thought, why should there be a difference? What's the purpose? Well, the Lord tells us there. Look at it again. What's he say? In our text, he says, he says that you may know that the Lord, that you may know that the Lord. The whole reason that there should be a difference is that you may know that the Lord. There should be enough of a difference in our life that we know it, but also that we might make a difference in somebody else's life Amen. and that they might know the Lord. Right. Isn't that right? Amen. That there is a difference. They should be able to see a difference. The world should see a difference in our life. What kind of influence do we have? If when they look at our life and we look just like enough... We, Man, we look just like a dog. Man, our appetite's like a dog. We're doing the same thing a dog does. And our attitude's like a dog. What difference is that going to make? That person's going to look and say, oh, that's just another dog. And same way with a Christian. Or somebody who says, I should say believer. Christian means Christ-like. But when someone sees our life, Listen, we got a purpose. Since God made a difference in our life, there ought to be a difference. And because there is a difference in us, we ought to make a difference in somebody else's life. We should have such a difference about us. We're supposed to be pilgrims and strangers. Amen? We're supposed, we're, we're supposed to be 
peculiar people and there ought to be a difference in us. Why should I want to wear the world's fashions? Every new fashion that comes out. I ought to do just what exactly, you know, I wore these eyeglasses for I don't know how many years, this, this style. And it's really not a style. I just don't like having anything blocking my vision. I just don't have any, it's no frames at all, so I don't, I don't see anything. A lot of times I'll scratch my eye thinking I'm rubbing my eye because I don't see it. I don't realize they're on sometimes. But I've had people trying to get me to change my frames. I don't want to change my frames. Why? I'm not doing it for fashion. Isn't that right? I mean, I mean that's the attitude we ought to have with our life. Why do I, why do I want to change? I, mean, I know some of you ladies, you get... There's, there's different styles that you need to change. I'm glad some of you aren't wearing some of the things they wore back in the biblical times. I, I just can't see some of you with, the, uh, you know, with that rag over your head and all those long sackcloth-type clothes on. You know, I, I, think, I think there's a balance there. And every barn needs a little paint every once in a while. That, I mean, that's the truth, isn't it? I mean, I don't mind that. <laughs> but God wants us to be different. Different. We, we should be different for Him. That's the purpose. Isn't that right? You know, and it should make a difference in our peace. Did you know dogs can be a loud, obnoxious creature? Have you ever been around a little yappy dog? It don't even have to be a big dog. Yep, 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 yep. Now, I'm offending somebody. I know. I've already hurt your feelings because of your fee-fee. Your fee. Your little feet. Yip, 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 yip. I mean, just all over your ankles, you know, just barking at you. Just no peace. No peace. You know what God said? He said, I'm going to fix that dog where he won't even move his tongue. Peace. He's able to give us peace. There should be a difference inside our heart, regardless of all the static out in this world, there ought to be a peace inside of our heart. You know, something else too, if he can stop that tongue, that means he can control that mouth and we don't, it's protection. I don't read where any of the Israelites got bit. I mean, if he control their tongue, he can control his mouth. Amen. Did you know God can give us protection? There is a difference. And we need to make a difference in this world. I really believe that he wants us to be different. He wants to make a difference in our life. And if we'll read his word, if we'll stay in the Bible and stay on our knees, I'm telling you, he'll make a difference more, more of a difference in our life even after we're saved. And then maybe that difference will start coming out in our heart through sanctification. And it will. Sanctification will make a difference. We'll start cleaning up some stuff. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I've arrived, but I'm sure a whole lot further I, today than I was back in, I guess, the first five years that I was saved. Go back there. Go look at some pictures. Don't go look at some pictures. But if I go look at some pictures and I go back to five years after I was saved, knowing I'm saved, he made a difference in my life. And then to where I am today, there's been a whole lot of cleaning up done. And I didn't necessarily do it. The Lord sanctified me through his word by reading his Bible. He began to clean up some things in my life. And I was willing to yield it to him as he dealt with me about it. And, and the Lord made a difference. Amen. Don't you want to make a difference in your neck of the woods? Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray that you would help us to make a difference. Lord, we all have a mission field. Dear God, every one of us in this building have a little mission field of our own. I pray that you'll help us to make a difference there, Lord, in our little world. Help us to be different than the world. May we have different appetites. May we have a different appearance. May we have a different attitude. Please, Lord, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Let's stand together. Brother Ben's getting a number ready.
Appreciate Miss Leah helping us out. Is there a difference in your life? Do you really believe that there is a difference in your life? I hope and pray that, that if it's not, we'll start working to try to be different, make some changes in our life. What number, Ben? 293 is your all on the altar. 293 is your all on the altar. Help him as we sing. Is there anything we need to mention before we go? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's yes, sir. Go on. Amen. Amen. Be praying about that. Got, got a whole week to pray over that. So pray that God bless. It's been a good meeting every single time so far. And uh, let's put prayer in front of it and make sure this one is too. All right. Okay, I hope you have a great week. And may the Lord bless you and watch out for the children. If you would, WC, would you please pray for us?